what is karma and how is it controlling every aspect of your life without you even being aware of it now we have all heard of the term karma and we have heard that karma is action karma is memory karma is the consequences of our action etc although almost all of us have heard about karma almost none of us have understood it in a deeper level so in this video we will go deep into the subject of karma and in the five parts within this video we will go to the bottom of this and we will uncover the mystery of karma and i truly believe if you understand karma you can begin to wake up and start taking control over your reality the advaita channel is about conscious living and conscious creation here we explore vedanta and various ancient spiritual teachings from india to understand the nature of reality and to consciously create our lives and make sure to hit like and subscribe to our channel to help us spread this knowledge so as i said there are five parts in this video the first part is about a basic introduction to karma the second part will be about the four aspects or the four types of karma and how they affect our lives the third part is about how vedanta explains karma the fourth part is about how yoga explains karma and here we will also look at sadguru's book karma and the fifth part of this video is about karma yoga and it is about taking control of our reality to be masters of our destiny now let us come to part 1 which is the introduction to karma the word karma comes from the sanskrit word kri which literally translates to action so every kind of action we perform at the physical level through the physical actions and at the mental level through our thoughts feelings emotions etc and at the energy level through our subtle vasanas and tendencies all of this constitute karma basically as per the teachings of ancient hinduism our subtle body or the mind passes through various physical bodies we basically go through various lives as different life forms as animals as plants as different human beings etc and through all these incarnations we perform various actions and we do various things and all of this the subtle body or the mind remembers so every action we perform every thought we think leaves an impression on the subtle body on the sukshma sharira this is karma and we have accumulated a huge amount of data from evolution from different reincarnations and rebirths and all of this together has created our sanchita karma which is the total repository of data that we have accumulated so we need to understand karma in this way it is not that someone else who is outside of us is looking at what we are doing and is noting down the good things and the bad things we are doing in order to reward us or punish us but it is the nature of our own subtle body or the mind that it remembers whatever it does so as long as we are identified with the subtle body whatever action we perform the subtle body remembers at its deepest level this is karma in part 2 let us look at the four aspects or the four types of karma the first type of karma that we need to understand is the sanchita karma this is the total accumulated karma that all of us possess which holds all the information and all the data from all of our past lives so let's say we have reincarnated a thousand times as thousand different life forms so the net total amount of data that we have accumulated the net total amount of information that we have accumulated through our actions from each and every one of those past lives together all of it is called sanchita karma 
this is a huge mountain of data that is upon us and we are responsible for this. The second type of karma is prarabdha karma. So this prarabdha karma is a part of that sanchita karma that a life form brings into this life. So a part of sanchita karma is assigned to a life form for its current life. So the life that we are living right now, the way we look, our height, our structure, the parents that we have, the family that we belong to, the default personality that we have, all of it is because of the prarabdha karma. This is a part of sanchita that has come to us for us to live this current life. With that, let us come to the third type of karma, which is Agami karma. Now, Agami karma is simply the karma that we perform in this current life. So, we do a lot of activities within this life and we accumulate a lot of karma within this life. And the data and the memory from these activities of our current lives will go and deposit onto the Sanchita karma, right? So, all the actions that we do in this current life, the effects of it or the impressions of it will go and deposit onto our Sanchita, which is the huge mountain of karma that we possess from all of our previous lifetimes. This is Agami karma. So, as per the teachings of Vedanta, what most of us are doing is, we are not simply dissolving or working out the karmic memory that we possess, but instead we are creating and generating new karma for ourselves. And this is going on and adding on to the Sanchita karma. And because of this, the cycle of samsara is infinite. And we are born again and again as different life forms as our Sanchita karma is not being depleted completely. Now, the fourth kind of karma is Kriyamana karma. Now, this is a very important aspect of karma. Kriyamana karma is basically the type of karma that we perform in this current life, which will yield results in this current life itself. Now, let's say you started your business in this current life and you put a lot of thought into it, you put a lot of effort into it and you put a lot of attention and focus into building that business. And eventually that business grows to a certain level and it yields you certain results. This is Kriyamana Karma in which you performed actions within this current life and you gained the results of it also in this current life itself. And it is said that Kriyamana Karma is very significant if we want to override Prarabdha Karma and if we want to go beyond Prarabdha to write our own destiny. Now coming to the third part of this video, which is the teachings of Vedanta on Karma. If you are a follower of this channel, you already know the nature of consciousness and you know the basic premise of Advaita Vedanta. As per Advaita Vedanta, our nature is that of the pure infinite consciousness and we are not the body and mind. So as long as we are identified with this body and mind, we suffer the consequences of this and we suffer the consequences of karma and we are stuck in an infinite cycle of samsara. But once we realize that our true nature is consciousness and this is beyond the mind, we go beyond karma and we attain that Vedanta calls enlightenment or Nirvana. So the freedom from karma is the ultimate goal as explained by Vedanta. And Vedanta explains that this can be attained through self-inquiry and self-knowledge. By looking at our own experiences and by truly understanding the nature of self and the nature of reality, we can go beyond this Maya. We can pierce the veil of illusion and we can realize ourselves to be who we truly are. And this is the purpose behind the teachings of Vedanta. And Advaita Vedanta also talks about karma and akarma. And it says that the doer is always the body-mind complex, never the pure consciousness. 
the consciousness is beyond all this and is never the doer but our body mind complex is that which is associated with karma and our identification with them is the cause of our suffering and according to advaita vedanta there is a fundamental opposition between karma and self knowledge when self knowledge is attained the sense of doership diminishes and karma ceases to bind the individual and only in the absence of self knowledge when one is ignorant does karma have any influence and vedanta also acknowledges the role of impressions or samskaras created by thoughts and actions these impressions influence an individual's subsequent thoughts and actions shaping their character and future experiences with this let us come to the fourth part of this video which is understanding karma through the teachings of yoga by looking at sadguru's book karma now the teachings of the yoga philosophy on karma are similar to the teachings of vedanta as they both refer to vedas while explaining these concepts but here we will look at some of the concepts and teachings by sadguru on karma here is my seven takeaways from the book karma a yogi's guide to crafting your destiny number 1 karma as inescapable basis of life the concept of karma is depicted in this book as an inescapable basis of human lives it says that individuals cannot evade the consequences of their actions it is described as a cycle that follows individuals wherever they go the second takeaway is about human capacity for freedom and transformation Human beings have the capacity of transforming and transcending their instincts but most people are unable to act without a personal agenda leading to a compulsive existence and the generation of karma this book emphasizes the importance of inclusively involved actions to reach the end of karmic production and to achieve liberation take away 3 karma is memory The book delves into the concept of karma as memory explaining how memory of karma is prerequisite for form and the connection between memory and the birth of the first form in creation it also discusses different types of memory that make up individual and collective karma take away 4 is about purification and karmic burning purification is necessary for those who are entangled and compulsive Once meditation begins the path becomes an illuminating process of creating a certain distance between oneself and their physical and mental dimensions leading to freedom the fifth takeaway is about understanding the origin of karma the book also explores the origin of karma and the creation of the karmic cycle depicting the emergence of the grand theater of cosmos and this world It talks about all this in the form of a yogic creation story which as per this book is a scientific truth that is explained in a poetic way. The sixth takeaway is about reclaiming the responsibility. The book highlights the tendency of individuals to outsource responsibility and pass the buck to their old karma thereby missing the enormous potential of the present moment it emphasizes that every human being has awareness enough to overcome karmic tendencies and has a choice to transcend their karmic inheritance and be free from it but the sad thing is most of us do not make use of this power that we have of transcending our karma and the seventh takeaway is the ultimate dissolution and transformation The ultimate aim for a yogi or for that fact any individual is maha samadhi or the ultimate dissolution of the limited identity. This involves a voluntary giving up of the physical, mental and energy bodies. So like this the book goes on to explain very deep concepts about karma and it talks about how we can go beyond karma and take control of our destiny. So if you want to go deeper into karma I strongly suggest you buy this book and study it Basically from all this what we need to understand is that our karma and the memory that we hold has created a certain momentum for our lives and it has created a set destination for our lives and now if we want to change this destination and if we want to take control of our destinies we need to overcome the momentum of karma 
and this requires energy this requires attention this requires focus and this requires concentration but the possibility is there this is the purpose of this channel and this is the purpose of the advaita conscious society with that let us come to the final part of this video which is the fifth part that is about karma yoga and about taking control of your reality to consciously create your lives the way you truly want to live now karma yoga is simply about duty which is dharma and it is about detachment and third it is about surrender first of all we need to follow dharma as explained by shri krishna in bhagavad gita whatever our dharma is as a citizen of a nation as a professional as a businessman as a mother father etc that is to be followed while being detached from the desires and from the outcomes of the action and the results and the outcomes must be surrendered to that higher intelligence or consciousness which is the source of creation through this whatever action we perform it becomes frictionless and we can easily attract the results and a positive life naturally unfolds this is the fundamental premise of karma yoga let us now go deep into karma as we discussed earlier karma is the accumulated memory of all our actions and it includes all the impressions that we have gathered this karma creates what we call vasanas vasanas are nothing but subtle tendencies that we have that makes us who we are that gives us this personality that we have right now so right now i like certain things and i dislike certain things i prefer a certain kind of food and i do not prefer another kind of food all of these things are because of our vasanas these are the subtle tendencies which each and every one of us have which makes us unique so at first our karma gives rise to our vasanas and these vasanas give rise to vrittis vrittis are the thoughts that we keep thinking on the surface level these are the results of vasanas and the thoughts we think if we keep empowering them and if we keep thinking them over and over again they become samskaras which are the behavioral traits which is in each and every one of us this samskara will go and integrate into our personality and makes us a certain kind of a person and because of our samskaras we again perform different actions and these actions again constitute karma and this karma gets collected on to the sanchita karma and this cycle keeps on going until we break it here it is very relevant for us to talk about the law of hypnotic rhythm which was given to us by napoleon hill so the hypnotic rhythm is a natural law through which nature fixes the vibration of all environments so this law uses hypnotic rhythm to make one's dominating thoughts and one's thought habits permanent napoleon hill tells us that our actions become our habits and our habits become our rhythms and this rhythm integrates into the personality and it becomes permanent so through this law of hypnotic rhythm we have unconsciously crafted a personality for ourselves this hypnotic rhythm can also be understood as karma karma is nothing but action and our past actions have created deep seeded vasanas or rhythms within us and this is controlling our lives unconsciously and we need to be conscious of this and we need to transcend this in order to create our lives consciously and napoleon hill also gives us certain pointers in his book outwitting the devil in order to come out of this hypnotic rhythm and in order to craft our lives consciously and here are the seven steps that he recommends step 1 definiteness of purpose know what you want from life step 2 mastery over self this is about having discipline third learning from adversity this is about not giving up four controlling environmental influence this is about associating ourselves with the right kind of people listening to right kinds of things 
reading the right kinds of books etc 5 time it's about giving permanency to positive rather than negative thought habits and developing wisdom 6 harmony this is about acting with definiteness of purpose and with absolute conviction 7 caution this is about thinking about our plan of action before actually acting and through these steps we can break the hypnotic rhythm and we can transcend it hello there if you wish to understand the true nature of reality and learn about consciousness conscious creation and the teachings of the ancient vedanta in order to live your life with purpose achieve fulfillment and consciously create a life that you truly want to live then you can join our community come learning platform the advaita conscious society for more information visit advaita.com thank you